After the patch dropped a few weeks ago, we asked our community to rank every melee and DPS in the game to see what a tier list would look like for the average player. We then gave the same poll to our network of rank 1 gladiators to compare the results. Let's just say some things were a bit shocking, but we're here today to break everything down. We're going to give you our opinion on the melee meta, ranking each spec based on its performance in both 3v3 and solo shuffle, since those are clearly the most popular brackets. 2v2 is a bit weird to say the least, but we got an update lined up soon. For today though, we hope you enjoyed this epic update to the melee meta in Dragonflight Season 1. Let's kick things off where we normally do, at the top of the S tier, with one spec you probably saw coming. Assassination Rogue was the only melee DPS in our community poll that received an overwhelming majority of S tier votes. And among our rank 1 players, it literally got a perfect score, with 100% of respondents placing it in the S tier. Assassination Rogue has taken the ladder by storm over recent weeks, seeing a massive surge in representation after the patch dropped in late January. The 05 class tuning included a redesign to the Asa Rogue talent tree, where King's Bane was moved to a new slot with an AoE Shiv talent to take its place. On its surface, this might not seem like a big deal, but when you consider that Shiv applies a 35% MS effect and increases all bleed and nature damage by 20%, Shiving multiple targets is like Warbreaker on steroids. For a while, Shiv was also incorrectly removing more haste than intended when used with numbing poison, which meant Asa Rogues could reduce spell damage and healing output passively, while also reducing the damage done by some melee like Feral Druids who rely on haste for dot ticks. This interaction was nerfed in a recent hotfix, but we still think Assassination is well deserving of its S tier spot for now. In the coming weeks though, there are bound to be some changes, and if there are, be sure to check out our articles site for up to date tier lists. There you will also find class guides that include talent builds from rank 1 players that you can easily import for your own character. Using our articles site will also give you an exclusive discount code to skillcap.com, which features hundreds of videos designed alongside the most elite players in WoW PvP, including multi rank 1 gladiators and even BlizzCon champions. These players even submit weekly arena commentaries bringing down some of your toughest 3v3 matchups and easy to follow guides. Everything at skillcap.com is backed by a rating gain guarantee where we promise you will rank up 400 points this season while actively using our website. Anyway, back to the video. At the moment, Assassination is the clear standout for melee DPS, but its dominance could be challenged by any of the following specs on the A tier. First up, Demon Hunter, which had an even split in votes within our community, getting an identical number of S and A tier votes. Rank 1 respondents were a bit more optimistic, with a narrow majority placing them on S. Our decision to move Demon Hunter to A represents a few different things, including some early season nerfs, which targeted their burst damage and some of their survivability. Don't get us wrong, Demon Hunter is still really good, and if we were to pick a runner up to Assassination Rogue, DH would definitely be in that conversation. One of the key selling points for the class is just the sheer amount of diversity it has in comp selection, where it synergizes with virtually every other spec in the game while also performing well in every bracket. For similar reasons, we're also including Unholy DK on the A tier. Just like Demon Hunter, Unholy was hit with some nerfs in early January, though these didn't seem to slow DK down as it continues to do well in every bracket. The community seems to agree, with some respondents still holding onto the belief that Unholy is actually S tier. Our rank 1 voters were less optimistic, but that is reflected in the fact that DK is less represented at the highest level, both in 3v3 and even in solo shuffle, where it is clearly lagging behind both Asa Rogue and Demon Hunter in representation. Despite all of this, we still think Unholy DK rightfully deserves a spot on the A tier. Despite new numerous nerfs since release, the spec is still performing well in every bracket and has remarkable synergy with a wide range of classes. Arms Warrior is in a similar position and was placed narrowly in the S tier by our community. Rank 1 respondents were slightly less enthusiastic, and in this case, we are actually taking the side of the pros. Warrior is an interesting case. You might remember our pre-patch predictions, where we thought Warrior might actually be S tier in Solo Shuffle, and despite their recent success in both of the popular brackets, we don't think they are at the level of Assassination Rogue quite yet. This could change with future PvP tuning, and if Asa gets nerfed and drops out of the meta, we could easily see Warrior or DH take its place. Moving on though, we have Windwalker Monk, with the majority of the community giving them A tier votes. Results were similar in our rank 1 poll, but here, the win was slightly less decisive. In any case, we agree with both sets of opinions. Even though Windwalker Monk got some minor nerfs in January, the spec is still performing well in every arena bracket. In general, Windwalker is a spec that definitely scales with player skill. Inexperienced monks might find themselves flopping every game, but better players have learned to adopt its hit and run playstyle. When this is combined with proper use of defensive cooldowns, monks are quite formidable opponents and continue to be an execution test for enemy healers. Speaking of flopping, Feral Druid definitely had a fall from grace after the 05 patch, where they received a few key damage nerfs layered on top of a punishing modifier to frenzied regeneration, both of which has clearly hurt their performance. 
Our community seems to agree, with Farrell receiving a nice number of A-tier votes, with some mixed opinions sprinkled in. Rank 1 players are in agreement with the community as well, but with slightly more uniform results. In any case, if one thing is clear, it's that Feral is no longer king of the jungle. Don't get us wrong, it's still a very good spec, though its relative strength in every arena bracket definitely took a hit after its nerfs. Moving on, we have Survival Hunter, which was another case of mixed opinions in our community poll, though the majority of respondents did place them in the high tiers. Voting in our Rank 1 poll was split down the middle, which is why we should disclose that Survival is on the lower end of the A tier. With that said, a lot of the value of Hunter in the meta is tied to the fact that Assassination is so pervasive, which gives enormous value to the Survival exclusive Mending Bandage. Even though this doesn't hard counter Assassination by any means, it is definitely an obstacle for the most dominant melee. With that said, Survival Hunter seems to require more finesse these days, as it definitely is on the squishier side of melee DPS, but we still see its potential in every bracket. Speaking of potential, we see a lot of it with Sub Rogue, who at this point is still hiding in the shadows behind Assassination, but that could easily change with future tuning. Our community poll was a bit chaotic, with the vote distribution seeming to trend toward the mid-tier, but here is where things get weird. Rank 1 players were way more optimistic toward subtlety, with the overwhelming majority of respondents placing them in A, with some even believing sub could be S. This is another case where we are siding with our rank 1 players, who typically give more value to the control offered by the sub rogue toolkit. This is what makes sub a bit hard to place on any tier list, since a lot of its strength comes from its ability to dictate the pace of the game with control, rather than win outright on scoreboard damage. There could also be a regional element to the mixed opinions, since Sub is clearly doing better in EU compared to NA, both in solo shuffle and competitive 3v3. In any case, we're going to be the first to warn you, if assassination gets nerfed too hard, get ready for a wave of Sub rogues. Another season of Sub RMP could be right around the corner. Now though, let's take a trip down to the B tier, where we have a few hopefuls waiting for some tuning. The first of which is Rhett Paladin, who was on a roller coaster of class tuning for a few weeks, reaching its peak in early January, only to crash into a wall of nerfs that came with the O5 patch. Our community had some mixed opinions regarding Rhett even after the changes, and votes were fairly split between the high and mid tiers. Rank 1 players were much more confident in their votes, with respondents clearly placing it on the B tier. The difference in opinions probably comes down to the fact that Rhett Paladins are a huge execution test for healers, especially at lower ratings. But at the rank 1 level, Rhett definitely gets bullied by other classes, especially wizards. This is definitely the case in solo shuffle, but also applies to rank 3v3, where the limited mobility of Rhett can give it some matchups which seem impossible. Because of this, we're placing it on B for now. Next up is Frost DK, which is where you can clearly see votes trending to the mid tier within our community. The story is pretty much the same at the rank 1 level, where everyone seems to agree that Frost DK is a true B tier spec. There were some moments in the season where Mez was able to push the spec to the top of the ladder using a fairly unconventional comp, but outside of this, Frost hasn't really flourished in rank 3 3 or solo shuffle. For the meantime, Unholy seems to be the better spec overall, due in part to the fact that Frost tends to feel a bit more linear, where Unholy is able to mold itself to any comp archetype. We are also introducing Fury on the B tier, despite receiving two sets of buffs. The first being some overall damage increases to a few spells, and the second being a slight buff to the duration of Slaughterhouse, which helped offset its nerfs in the early season. Fury had some mixed opinions on our community poll, but managed to secure an A tier majority. Despite this, we will be moving it down to the B tier for now. This is simply due to the fact that ARMS is noticeably better than Fury, despite the majority of their toolkit overlapping. Right now, ARMS is the winner due primarily to the fact that its healing reduction is a bit more consistent, which increases its value in a meta where healers just generally suck. Last but certainly not least, we have Outlaw Rogue, which also caused some mixed results in our community poll. While having a more uniform distribution among our rank 1 respondents, with some even placing it on the A tier. We're gonna be honest, we thought Outlaw might be doing better in the meta, especially after the widespread availability of tier sets. One thing is true however, and it's that Outlaw is clearly not as good as it was in late Shadowlands, and is still at least a tier or two behind Assassination. In any case, there are a few players who continue to keep it competitive, and until it starts producing definitive results, we will be keeping it on the B tier. With that in mind, we have our absolute lowest tier, and if you've been keeping score, you already know what's next. Enhancement Shaman was the only spec in our community poll where the C tier took lead in votes. Even though rank 1 respondents were a bit more optimistic, we're going to side with our community in agreement that Enhancement is probably the worst melee overall. It doesn't seem to matter what bracket they play, Enhance is almost always the kill target, due in part to its relatively lackluster defensive toolkit. And as one of the few melee without a major healing reduction effect, Enhance definitely needs a carry from other high tier melee. 
And with that, we have our complete picture of the melee meta after patch 10.05. We are trying to be a bit more selective with our S tier these days, reserving it for the specs or comps that clearly stand out. And in this case, it's Assassination Rogue. With that said, the A tier is absolutely stacked, which is representative of the fact that melees seem to be consistently good in every bracket. Well, that is with the exception of our mid and low tiers, who currently seem to underperform in solo shuffle and rank 3v3. For now though, that wraps up our update. We want to hear from you. Did you like seeing comparisons between average players and rank 1 gladiators? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, be sure to bookmark our articles page for the most up-to-date tier lists. And as a reminder, every article also includes a discount link to sign up for skillcap.com, which houses our famous class courses that teach you rank 1 fundamentals, because we only work with the most elite players WoW has to offer. These same rank 1 gladiators upload weekly arena commentaries, breaking down difficult matchups in easy to follow steps. All this comes back to the rating game guarantee, which means you have nothing to lose. So don't wait, visit skillcap.com today. But anyway, that's it for now. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.